So I have a question. When, what decade, what time period did Nigeria make the most wrong, most poor decisions to end up in where it is today? Because it wasn't always like that. It wasn't always like this, the way it is in the current state. For example, the way that everybody has a generator now. Every, every business, every household that wants to have reliable electricity. That wasn't the case um, just a few decades ago. That wasn't the case, for example, in the 80s. And um, partly nice to you. I remember well, very well, when I was um, in China, Nigeria in the 80s, no one, you know, you didn't need a, a generator. The, the electricity Nepal was not reliable. It wasn't reliable, but that didn't mean you needed a generator. We lived in a, in, you know, in a house with double with two stories with with um, with lots of electricity needs, and there was never, um, and you know we didn't have a generator. Lots of people we knew didn't have one either, and it wasn't really needed. There was enough electrical supply that it was like it was pretty much guaranteed to be there, available at several hours of the day. It was never like gone for days or gone for more than just hours at a time. It was never out for more than hours at a time. It was there. So, but now it's almost like, you know, that you could have, um, you know, electrical outages that just go on for, for days and maybe even weeks, which is, which is pretty crazy. But that's just one example. Another example is, um, related to to education, you know, now that especially with the ASU strike, that is just um, um, you know, I don't remember being there there being so many strikes. Just you know, a couple decades ago, they were not. It's just it's become such a thing now that you can't finish a four year program in four years, and. I mean, that's not even just like lamenting other things like supplies of the equipment and like the current books and things like that or whatever. Every That's not even lamenting other things and updated facilities and all. That's not even that, but just the existence, the actual um, um, in being in session, even that's too much, you know, apparently. So, um, I mean, that's just... That's a pretty difficult problem. I remember when when my dad was, um, you know, he would tell me about his his university days and how, you know, whether um, you you know civil engineers or chemical engineers they, they would have debates among them who was the going to be the most needed professionals, who were going to be the most needed professionals um, upon um, for the building of the country because the you know, because that was just right after independence. And it was like, the key then was like, who's going to be, you know, who are the most crucial professions going to be in building the country? And that was what was on the heart of all the young people then. Their focus was on, you know, what is going to make um, the country great and how are they going to contribute to that? And, and I think that the, the young people felt steered in that direction they felt steered in that direction of like, oh, you know, we're going to do so well because the, the leadership was steered in the right direction or at least appeared to be at that time. But I think that um, over time, I don't know, that just sort of dissipated and changed. I'm not sure how or, or, or why that is, but it just seems like decades after that, now it's like all you hear the leadership talk about now is like, you know, what, um, what click there and what, what group they're in and how they're going to share this and how they're going to do this and how a delegate just bought a car for like what a delegate there was a a, a news of a delegate delegate be collecting the funds from um from the candidate that he he voted for and spending the money on a on a, on a car you know and that's fine but that's like that's like the news now and then as far as education goes oh they're on strike they don't you know whatever they don't matter so <laughs> So, and I'm just really interested to know when, when, you know, when do you think that the most decisions were the most sort of wrong focuses were taken to kind of just get things to, to um, where they just are now? Um, I mean, it's an interesting question because you have, 
you know, the people who went to universities in the 70s and, 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 and started um, and finished them and were working have an, an entirely different reality than, um, than the kids for, from, from today, even in the 80s. Um, that was a different reality from, from today also. And I mean, they should be somewhat different, but it shouldn't be as, as huge as it is. As, I mean, the gap is so huge. And then the concern is that it's only gonna get bigger because if the issue, if a big part of the issue is that there was a lot of population growth and there was no planning that kept up with it. It just like sort of got bigger and bigger and the people at the top just kind of kept doing whatever they wanted in their little way. And, and that just got more, and they got more and more removed from reality, from like tackling reality on the ground, tackling like the fact that 40, 50% of people are go hungry every day, you know, that they just got more removed. Um, th that problem, it seems as if like, if that was the problem, if that was a huge part of the problem between say like, um, 40 years ago and now, to me, it's just like, okay, well, then that's just going to get worse because what are you doing now to make sure that in another, you know, in another 40 years, it's not completely like, I, I mean, it can't get much worse. So what it probably will happen at that point is everyone will just, it will just leave. It'll just have more and more of, you know, issues with people just saying, okay, well, the survival here is like, that's not really possible, which is sad because it should be possible, but the lucrativeness of people trying to get out will just will just stay there or be even more on the increase. So um, I mean, I want to know what what we're doing to make that better. How can we make that better? And is anybody proactively thinking about that, or are they just thinking about like you know, Emilio Con, Iwalu Con, or whatever else you know, because that it's their turn or whatever, because, I mean, because in real, in reality, there's like millions of people whose turn it is. And that always falls like, that always becomes like <laughs> a side, like just becomes like, oh yeah, of course, whatever. That just, that always becomes like, uh, like just <laughs> a side swipe aspect. But I guess that's that, so. So they end up feeling as if they have no choice but to like escape and migrate. And then, but then that becomes like, you know, that comes with its own challenges. But maybe it's, maybe it's okay. I don't know. But we just have to keep working at it to make the place better, to make the place more sustainable and, and to actually focus on that and to distract and to just get away from being so, um, like all caught up in things that don't that don't edify, um, you know, actually making the, the the people do better because anything else, it's just in the long run, it's um, it's going to make it more problematic for for the average person, and and some people don't care because they feel like it doesn't affect them, but it does because it just does. It's like you know. It, it everything in your environment, that everything that you make your allied environment to become affects you too. So you can so so shrugging it off, shrugging off um, the the people who who are not you know the general population that's not being looked after. Shrugging that off is not um, is not a sustainable way to to be. They'll just become a bigger and bigger, and they already are. That's why we have so many issues with kidnapping and banditry. That's why we have so many issues with just. <laughs> but because if everybody was doing better, they wouldn't be drawn to doing any of that stuff. But we'll see. <laughs>